So, who can be a medium? I can hear you all asking that question. Who can be a medium? And there's, t- there's two schools of thought. Mediumship is a gift, and the other school of thought is medium is a faculty that everyone's got. So the first school of thought, mediumship is a gift. This was where Gordon believed, very much Gordon believed in this. He always used to say, mediums are born and not made. If you haven't got that God-given gift of mediumship, no amount of training, we can throw any amount of training at you, and you won't be a medium. You either are a medium or you're not a medium, there's no in-betweens. And if it's not there, we can't develop it within you. Whereas the other school of thought is that mediumship is a faculty. Like playing the piano, like being artistic, it's a faculty. Everybody's got it to a degree. And any, any, everyone can develop what ability they have further. It's all about the time and effort. If you wanted to learn to play a piano, it's all about giving it the time and effort. If you've got a high natural ability, you'll play that piano a bit quicker than somebody who might not have such a high degree of ability. So which one do you feel is correct? Is it a gift or is it a faculty? Was, was there a queue when God was giving out mediumship? If, you, if you're in the football queue, well, oh, I missed out my mediumship. <laughs> if, you, if you're in the mediumship, if the front of the mediumship queue, queue, you can't do nothing else because you didn't get in any of those. So. <laughs> Can each of us be a Picasso? Yeah. That's right. Or was that, or was that phenomenal yeah. degree of ability? Was that a gift? Will, will everybody, has everyone got the ability to develop mediumship, to stand up on here week in, week out in church services and give? Oh, I don't know about you, but I know a few um, people who might work on building sites or who've got no interest in this whatsoever. The last thing they want to do is develop it. Or is it, if you have got a gift, you might come to a church because you might want to develop it because you're aware, at a subconscious level, you have a gift. So everyone who turns up, that's spirit saying yes. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you friend. <laughs> so there you go, you see. We get answered. And knock twice if that's a yes. Once for a no. <laughs> so, you know, is, is, it the, is it the people who actually do have a gift who subconsciously get sent to the circles or have an interest in developing this and therefore all the people we see can be developed to a degree because they have an ability and all the people who couldn't care less about it and haven't got a gift at all those are the ones who are currently down the pub now watching telly at home watching whatever's on so is that the question all of us here are the unusual ones <laughs> we're the special ones we're all special tonight <laughs> so should we do a show of hands who thinks it's a gift? It's a bit of both. It's a bit of both. And who thinks it's a faculty that everyone can develop? And who's undecided? Yeah, I'd agree that everyone yeah. can develop their psychic faculties. Mm. But not everyone can develop mediumistic. So we've got a couple on the gift and we've got a couple on the we've got a couple on the faculty and everyone else seems to be awfully confused in the middle. Is that right? Is that a fair is that a fair a fair assessment? So shall I give you my theory? Right, so my, what, what I think is that everybody has potential for mediumship. Whether that potential is high, medium, low, non-existent. We all have a potential. And I also think we all have what I would call an existing natural ability, which is if I took you without any training whatsoever and stuck you on that platform and told you to make a link, some people naturally might be able to do that. It might be there on the surface already and would take minimal effort to develop it. And other people wouldn't have a clue. They'd just get up there and say, you're joking, aren't you? And so, so, you know, and some people are very intuitive naturally and can do quite a lot and others can't. Some people come to a church with absolutely zero ability whatsoever, zero natural ability, but within a few weeks or months of training, they're doing phenomenally well. And for me, if we assume that there is zero natural ability, so the person doesn't come into the church displaying high signs of ability, everyone comes in without showing anything, then if you had a high potential with 
a little bit of effort, you do really well. If you had moderate potential, with a fair amount of effort, you'd still do pretty well. But if you had low or non-existent potential, low potential, you put a heck of a lot of effort in, but you haven't got very far, and non-existent potential, you put all the effort in, and nothing ever happens. Make sense? Mm -hmm. And some people, say somebody comes in here, they may have a very high natural ability, somewhere up here, but actually a low potential to develop it. So as they develop it, they go over there like that. So it's separate. The two are not related necessarily. So that's totally confused you, hasn't it? <laughs> so my formula is the immediate mystic ability is what is there to start with, whether it's up that scale, plus your potential times the time you give it, the effort you give it to develop it. So is it a gift? Well, if you've got a low potential or a zero potential, you haven't got it. So in a way, people who say it's a gift are saying you've got to be moderate to high potential to be able to do something with it. So they're right. But is it something we can all develop? Well, if you believe that we're all on the sliding scale somewhere over here, you can develop it to a degree. But you may spend months in a circle developing it and still not be able to get on the platform and work with it. But you can do something with it. In my experience of teaching, everybody can be trained to do a link, a competent link with spirit. But getting some people beyond that is really hard. And occasionally I see people and I think, do you know what? It doesn't look like there's a potential, high potential there showing itself at the moment. But the funny thing is, nobody can ever say. You hear stories of people who sit in circle for 10 years, then all of a sudden it takes off. So nobody can ever say to you, you have not got the potential for mediumship. Can't say it. All they can say is, at the, this moment in time, looking at your potential, I'm not seeing it as a tutor. But they can never say to you, you shouldn't do mediumship. It's not there. Because you can't say that. Because, as I say, some, it may, you may have to get through certain things for it to unfold. You may have emotional problems in your life. You may have mental problems in your life. Like you've got to work through to take those out of the equation before it will naturally unfold beyond that. So for me, it's a mix of the two. It's like a faculty we all have, but also if it isn't there, if it's there in a very small degree, you can argue that you've got to have it to a moderate to high potential for it to be a gift, I would say. So this explains why sometimes in circle, some people just seem to raise their head and others seem to have a bit of a challenge at it. But it shouldn't put us off developing, that's the key. And sometimes you get natural mediums who on the surface look like they've got it all, but it takes them years to develop it. And other ones who can just go rocketing off, you know, people we've seen who've developed within like weeks or months. So this, this is my view which tries to explain all of that. But the, the bottom line is, is that we can all improve. So the key thing to take from all of this is, no matter what your potential, with time and effort, you can develop your mediumship. So wherever you're at, time and effort and discipline and motivation will help you to develop it. And actually, the potential for mediumship, a lot of that is related to what we talked about earlier, your reasons for doing it. If you're motivated by fame and fortune, you might find this not happening for you. But if you're motivated by service, wanting to give to help other people and to touch souls, you might find you're up there on a high potential. And also, effort as well is not just about time. Effort is not just about the time you spend sitting in circle or the time you spend doing things, because a lot of it's about the quality of that effort as well. Mm -hmm. If you go to a good tutor, you can get moved a lot forward a lot further than if you just go to a circle where no one has a clue and it's just a tea party. Everyone just sits there for a tea party <laughs> and no one ever develops. Whereas if you go to a good tutor who's going to push you and put you through <coughs> better exercises, you'll get a lot further. So it, it, it's about the quality of the effort as well. And the quality of the teaching falls into that category there.